My name's Ross McGuigan. I moved to Chiswick in January of 1956 with my two parents, Bill and Nell, or Helen as she was then. We moved from Leichhardt, where I was born, and I was in Chiswick for the next 20 years. When I was born in Leichhardt, I was born in Marion Street, and Dad's place was in Marion Street. Right behind the little lane behind them was um, Marlborough Street, which is where Mum grew up. And Mum and Dad didn't know each other until they were about 28 years old. They had no idea. They lived across a bloody laneway, for Christ's sake. And the only reason that they met was Mum had two sisters. And Dad's dog had got out in the back lane and bitten one of the sisters. So Dad comes over to apologise. And years later, I'm born. So they, you know, I don't know what happened in the middle. So, but obviously something. Um, first moving into Chiswick, there were probably only half a dozen roads. We were mainly all boys that played together in our little street gang. We all went to Dremoyne Public School and we all then went on to Dremoyne Boys High School. Great place to grow up because we had a public bars up the road that was built when I was there. It was just a tidal bars and it was sort of like a central place where everyone hung out. Right next door to there where we have Boardfield Drive at the moment where all the big units have been built. I went to school with Jeff Boardfield. His grandfather was an alderman on the council in those days and that's where Boardfield Drive's name originated. It used to be what they called the box company. The box company was just an area that simply made boxes, normally three ply, five ply, seven ply timber boxes. And as kids the idea was to sneak along the waterfront into there and then hide from the people who were in there trying to kick you out and the workers who were in there. Okay, the box company itself was a great place as little kids to play in. There were large amounts of timber, timber panelling, timber beams, and they were all covered by large big green tarpaulins. Now you can imagine kids with nowhere really to play. We didn't have computers naturally and things like that, so it was outside. You would come back, of course, when the street lights came on. We only had probably half a dozen street lights in the whole place, so it didn't really matter. And we were just all, you know, you just wanted the streets playing together, disappear at sort of eight o'clock in the morning, go to someone's place for lunch, where you get half a dozen kids turn up, you'd have peanut butter sandwiches and some sort of soft drink or water, and then you'd go out and just do the afternoon stuff. <clears throat> Down at what they call Tut Crescent today, before it was Tut Crescent, we had a bamboo patch. And the bamboo patch was great because you could just get lost. It was probably the size of two house blocks. But as little kids, it was huge. And you could get in there and just play and run and have fun. We always had the waterfront. It was always based around water. As kids, we had little canoes, nothing like they've got these days, just plywood canoes that we put together. And we'd paddle down under the Harbour Bridge. We'd paddle under the Gladesville Bridge. I was there in the days where the Gladesville Bridge was built. <clears throat> I could look out of my window, watch the bridge being constructed as we were you know, growing up. And the thing was that there were no problems in those days about going out and just having fun growing up as a little guy. You didn't need a lot to do things with. You got everywhere on a bike and you got everywhere by walking. And that was it. <clears throat> right next door to us um, was a great guy. Um, the Quill family, Q U I double two boys, Steve and Ronnie, and the parents who were Eddie and Betty. Eddie, or Ted, as he was known. Teddy was the head of the Sydney Vice Squad for a number of years in the 1960s where basically um, things were settled a bit differently in the world. <laughs> Teddy was also tied up with the famous 21 Division headed up by Bumper Farrell. But as far as a neighbour goes, every, probably every, every Christmas at least, but at least once a month, he'd just put on a party next door and he had a downstairs room and everyone, like the neighbours had just gone, there was a good thing about, like the neighbours had just turn up and the beers, had, but you'd take in a bottle of beer or something and there'd be just food and drinks and everyone would get together and it was really cool. Probably hindsight, my friend Harry, Harry Hindsight, wonderful person, 
and Hattie have said, Ross, hang on to your place. Whatever you do, don't sell it. <laughs> but the thing was, you know, situations at those t- at that time dictated it. So therefore, Ross, buy a block of land down there in that street at the bottom of the area, which is all swamp. It's absolute crap. You, you know, it's part of the tip. Buy that because there were places built on that today that are obviously worth a couple of million dollars, <laughs> and we could have picked it up for a song. And I tell you, when when my parents first moved into Heslett Street, we were only a, a poor family. I think it cost to build our home one thousand seven hundred and fifty pounds is what Mum borrowed or Dad borrowed, and we paid that off over a period of time. He was offered the whole of that side of Heslett Street for £5,000. Now, in those days, £5,000, you think, holy, who's got five? I mean, we had a £300 deposit, for God's sake, to put down. And £5,000 would have bought you from the bottom of Heslett Street up to where the Mathesons were living. Um, There are, at the moment, there, 6, 8, 12, 14, 15 dwellings. I would say each of those dwellings would be in the vicinity of average two million. So there's thirty million for five thousand dollar outlay in fifty five years. That wouldn't be a bad super retirement package, would it? <coughs> so, but Harry Hindsight is a wonderful teacher. Yeah. So, so there you go. Chiswick is a lovely place to grow up. I love Chiswick. Chiswick was part of my childhood. I adore Chiswick. Chiswick for me was just a wonderful place. Not Chiswick. Chiswick. The wobble you is silent, like a worman. Get your wobble you out of the worman language. Chiswick. <laughs> That's a great Thanks, guys. <laughs>